Herm Tang said something interesting at, yeah. after the game last week. He said, it doesn't matter how big of a lead they have, you know, you yeah. guys, they're going to let you back in the game. Yeah. Is there, is there a, a built-in sort of ebb and flow with the kind of offense that you're running and the kind of style you're trying to play where you have to kind of expect that and then figure out ways to get, get, uh, get through it? Um, I, I think uh, we're going to stay aggressive. So, um, you know, I guess a, a simple kind of cliche deal would be like, we're not going to spend a lot of time playing prevent defense, you know, to go Super Bowl. Um, like, we want to go play. And so we want to get a lot of possessions. And so a lot of possessions, there can be more variability. Um, we want to use all the space on the floor. And so using all the space on the floor, there can be more variability. So in that sense, yes. Um, um, and, but that's a way that we're really committed to play, and it's been super successful for us. So we're going to kind of keep going that way. I actually don't know how to dig way deeper into it than that, um, about how our style of play fits into that. Um, but, but we're actually, you know, if that is a contributor, I'm actually trying to push deeper into that. Like, I'd like to be more committed to staying assertive on the floor all the time. We trust that actually a lot. It was crazy though. I mean, they, they yeah. were six for 22 from three, and four of those came in the last minute. Yeah. Yeah. So it was just kind of a crazy ending anyway. So maybe each yeah. one's a little different. I think so. You know, it's, it's interesting. Um, when you, um, you know, one of the things that we, remind ourselves all the time because we are a deep dive analytics team um, like our NBA counterpoints really start kind of like trusting the numbers about the all-star break about 40 plus games in and those are longer games with more possessions and you know we're you know our season is over at that point <laughs> and so so um, we're kind of taking it for what we can. Um, we recognize the anomalies that, that happen in the game all the time. And differentiating between anomalies and trends gets more complicated when you have a really small sample size. It just gets less trustworthy. And so, um, you know, we're digging into all the sides of everything we're seeing and trying to pick and kind of pick and choose the data that we think probably has some staying power versus the data that's a little anomalous is complicated. You know, certainly with, with UCF, um, you know, I do think there's a space to think that, you know, that doesn't happen every day. I think that, that might stay in an anomaly category, but there are takeaways for us. There's certainly things that we can learn about the last minute. You know, we've spent a lot of time talking about, um, you know, how we, how, how we would approach slowing down the charge, um, um, kind of late game where it's just like you have to play with reckless abandon because you're down and you're just desperation trying. Um, I, I'd never want to model a whole defensive package in that scenario because because it's it, it just doesn't happen all the time. But um, certainly we've spent some time considering that and and um, also considering you know how we approach uh, the offensive side of the ball in those situations. Although I thought we were really good in that sense. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's all, you know, you kind of go down the rabbit hole with all those things to try and figure them out. And, um, and it's what makes it fun. With your, the way your offense has had to evolve, yeah. reinvent itself with all these different uh, ways to win, like mm -hmm. you said the other night with free throws. Yeah. Is that sustainable? Can you keep doing that to the end of the season? And I, I think it's probably necessary. I would actually probably, f I would probably, um, um, look at it through different glasses, right? I would probably say that in this league, it's probably necessary that you're pretty adaptable to um, kind of grabbing onto the circumstances of the game. One of the things that's interesting about the way we play is um, that we're different than everybody in this league, the, the way we approach the game. And so what we're seeing offensively and defensively is that that our scouts end up being super, like we spend more time guessing because you look at how a team's guarded the last five games, they're going to approach us differently defensively. And you look at a team's attacked offensively, sometimes they're actually attacking us different offensively than what we see on film all the time because we're kind of like out there a little bit hyperbolic by design. And so, um, you know, I think for us, that just increases the requirement for adaptability. You know, we used to walk into a game for like, ah, you know, just on a simple level. Like we have a, you know, we have a good sense of how they guard ball screens, for example. And then like, 
man, we've we, the film has lied to us a bunch this year. And so we, we're, you know, one of the nice things is having a, you know, having a little bit more veteran team. Um, um, is our guys are pretty adaptive, adaptable through the course of the game. And, and, and um, so, long answer to your question, um, I think we're going to have to be really malleable as we go through this, especially as we start seeing these teams for a second time where they've kind of got one look at us and now they're getting a second shot at how we do it different. And it's, it's really fun in this league to kind of look at coaches' answers and see where they want to take their team because it's, 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 um, these are great coaches in this league. It's been super fun. Do you envision that being something you Identity of your program beyond this year, like big picture, like being the, the team that's just kind of a completely different style than everyone else. I like it. I actually dig it. Um, I I think it. You know, I mean, I don't know if it's good, but I I think it makes it so fascinating. Like this, this, this we're winding our way through this conference season. Every game is so fascinating. I mean, it's so fascinating to see how teams come out at the beginning of the game and how they adjust uh, throughout the game. And, and um, I don't know, I like, I like living on the edges because it's, um, it just pushes everybody to be a little bit more creative and a little bit more decisive in what they're trying to do. It's, it's fun. I wanted to ask you about this week's opponent, uh, State's got a big Garrison freshman. Yeah. Like, where does he stack up? I mean, you know, you're yeah. about big, man. Where, yeah. where does he stack up in the hierarchy of these big 12 bigs? I think he's really special. He's really special. Um, you know, his his ability to protect the rim, his ability to run the floor, his ability to kind of change coverages uh, defensively and guard multiple positions. Uh, his his touch around the rim is actually pretty special, out to 15, 17 feet. Um, he's got a good sense. You know, sometimes – if you take bigs out of the post where they can feel a body and you start start to put them in the high post or in the middle of a zone or in a short roll where they don't have that contact, especially young bigs, sometimes they get really uncomfortable. He doesn't. He's just like, yep, I'm good. You know, he's got a calmness about him. I think he's really, really impressive. Um, and I think they got a, uh, you know, they got a rising star on their hands. I think he's going to be really special. Second game now, a line of switch, I believe. How are you liking the combination? Jackson and um, I, I like it. Um, you know, I, we probably end up changing ten more times before the end of the season, but um, let's hope we play that many games. Um, but um, I, I like it. Our guys, you know, we. Um, um, it's been nice that uh, I, I, got, I have to believe we started more different lineups than any team in the Big Twelve. Is that possible, Tice? You're up there. Yeah, I'm testing him every <laughs> press conference, and I'm, 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 um, and what's been nice for us is it's been relatively seamless. It's involved a lot of stress and duress on our side, but the guys' performance has been really good, and so, um, so you know, I, I think that's a good fit. I think um, our guys like it. I think they're happy with it, and so, like I said, we'll, uh, I, you know, I'd expect probably changes as we move forward, just because the game requires it, but, but. I, I think it's been solid for us. Ali had touched on that as well in the interview before. He had said that's what makes this team so difficult to scout. Yep. He can start to scout. Yep. You know, why is this team so difficult to scout? Because yep. Sean should be in the start. Yep. Line. Yep. Yeah, and and so that, that in that sense, um, you know, our misfortune has been our blessing too, right? And. Um, and hopefully it'll pay dividends as we go through the season. You know, you'd like to argue that you know since we've had. Uh, you know, so many changes um, that the guys are accustomed to it. And so as they come in the future, we'll be ready to go. But, you know, we have to prove that. We have to prove that it has any value, and hopefully we'll be able to do that. How, how is, uh, I just want to see, if, I know it's a personal deal for him, but how is Marcus Adams doing? If there's an update you can give, maybe yeah. how he's going through his situation right now. Yeah, as you can imagine. I mean, there's no words, right? It's um, it's just brutal. Um, but he's with his mom and his and his brother, and and uh, they have a close circle of uh, support people around him. And and um, you know, it's hard to say more than that. Just in the sense of like, how do you describe a you know a tragedy like that? So it just is, it is what it is. Uh, you know, he's um, he's he's planning to get back here soon. They're trying to take care of a couple of things uh, through the end of this week, and and um, and then it'll be you know kind of bouncing back and forth as need be. You've played trade quite a yeah. 10 minutes the last few years. What does he bring? What do you like? What have you seen from him that's uh, 
changed you guys a little bit. Yeah, he's you know he's bringing terrific energy. Um, he's he's uh, bringing a real positivity and, a, and a, like I mean this game is an energy game. Like the game kind of feeds off energy, and I think he's been great that way. Um, you know he's. Um, uh, he, he has a capacity to cover a lot of ground on the floor, which really helps us. Um, um, you know, he still has a, t a ton of game inside him um, as he keeps growing. But, uh, you know, it's helped us uh, manage uh, foul situations and fatigue situations and energy situations on the floor. And, and um, I think it's a, it's a good vibe. Um, you know, um, he's one of the important pieces of this team. Oklahoma State's, one, Oklahoma State's one of the five teams you guys play twice. Yeah. Did Colbert explain how they decided that the certain teams that you do draw twice on the schedule, UCF, Oklahoma? Was there yeah. any kind of rhyme or reason that they explained putting the schedule together and why they did it? Yeah, I don't know. Um, if there is, I haven't, I haven't been a party to it. I think, you know, in general, I think it's pretty safe to say that TV drives a lot. And so um, I think there's something to that. But um, beyond that, I'm not sure. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you.